Hey friends, it's Sonia with Junk Monkey Paint Company and welcome back to my daily vlog. Today's video is one that you've been requesting. Earlier this week, I showed you guys where I moved, moved some stuff, did some updates, where I put this vintage white stand that I painted. And next to it, do you see that plaid chair peeking right there? Well, I got so many messages on how I created that plaid chair. While I've done many videos teaching you guys how to do this, they are way back when, so I decided to pull one out and to shorten it and to make this step-by-step -step video for you. All right, talk to you at the end. I hope you enjoy it. Who loves some plaid? And I just want you to think about all the colors that you can do. I'm gonna show you how I cheat to do it. I pick my favorite Jump Monkey color and how I create, create around one color. I created this earlier today. This is a, sun, actually maybe I'll go ahead and um, reverse the screen so you can see it. But I'm gonna show you how to create like this plaid look and you can do it in so many different colors. I'll show you how I cheat, what my process is. Maybe everybody else has different ways to do it, but I'm just gonna show you mine because I think it could be really helpful. I have just got a piece of plank wood that's been sitting in my basement. You guys know I make use of all my scraps of wood and obviously I love to turn it into something else. Just cannot bear to throw it out. Anybody else like that? You hang on stuff to stuff and you go, I will make something out of that. So it's got like paint on it and stuff, maybe even footprints sometimes. But it's okay, today is its day to get made beautiful. So when we clean up the basement, I'm like, no, don't throw that away. Today I'm gonna use my antique lace for the base. I have to tell you that when I wanna create like bolder classic looks, I use vintage white, but when I want more cozy feel, that's when I grab from my antique lace, which is our, um, our off-white color. And actually there is some white on this, so you might even be able to see if I kinda put it dab next to it. Do you see the difference? that this is white and this is an off-white color. So next step, let's go ahead and grab some painter's tape. When you get painter's tape, there you stand there by all the bins when you go to like these stores and you're like, what do I need? There are so many different widths and they're good for everything, right? Lots of different projects. But for me, I like when I, this is the way I think about it, if I'm going to be doing a project that involves tape, um, like how wide do I want my plaid to be, okay? If I go smaller than this, then I definitely get more of a checkerboard, more of a style. But I like this, I mean, I'm guessing this is probably an inch and a half wide. What would, what would you guys say compared to this one? You can see the difference, right? So this is more chunky, but if I had a big tabletop, maybe I wanna do big chunky um, squares. So just know that the thinner, the smaller your squares for your plaid will be, the wider, the more chunkier. Just go somewhere in the middle. You know, if you really wanna measure it out, you can. For me, I am just an eyeball it kind of person, so I am gonna eyeball it and just stick it down in the middle, okay? So I try to always to remember that when I do my plaid, start in the middle. This is like one of the best tips I'm gonna share with you guys on here today. Take your tape, another piece, and that can be your guide. So these are my, my guides. And so now they're my guides too. They're my guides, man, they're helping me out. So now I can take and make my next line by using those taped pieces. Take my two guide people off right there. They can have a break, go have a snack. Now make sure that your tape's down good. Do a swoosh of the fingers. Give your piece a good whoop whoop and you're looking awesome and mighty fine. I'm gonna make sure you're stuck down really, really well. So because I want gray black, I am going to go ahead and grab my black velvet. Now I'm gonna go with the same light that I used for my background to scoop some up. Can you see it right here? I'm just gonna scoop a bunch up and put it right there next to my black. Because you know that you can lighten any of our colors. They are made to blend. So what do you get when you put antique lace and black together? We get gray. Now what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and paint in between the lines. All right, so I think we're good. I think we're dry. Let's go ahead. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. All right, I think just even this part is really fun. You start to get ideas, like I love, I just do gray stripes over antique lace. I love me that even like blue over antique lace or uh, blue slate. I just think that it's kinda, it's classy, right? It's classy. Anybody else love stripes? Stripes make me happy. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is grab our same tape again, and this time we're gonna go in the opposite direction, okay? In the middle, pretty much there, pretty much there, that's about it. If you really positively needed it to be absolutely perfect, then just measure it out, right? No biggie. So remember those two little guide guys that I showed you in the beginning? You know what, they're coming out again. Those guide guys are coming out again. Even if you have somebody in your life that can cut you a piece of wood in the shape of a pumpkin, how cute would that be? 
I also love, well, I mean, you just saw how to do stripes. That was a good tutorial on how to do stripes. If you just want to do a buffet and maybe you just want to do the inserts in the door uh, with some stripes on it or across the top, or you want to do uh, an entire plaid look right across the top of your TV stand. Remember, get your tape down good. Use the clean release. Clean release is made so that, you know what, you can peel it back up and it won't take the layer of uh, paint that you have underneath it. So there we go. There we go. Nice and good. And now we're ready for the next color to go on top of this. So here's what I do. Same tray, same tray, same brush. And I take another scoop of my antique lace and I put into this. So I can just keep adding some more into it. I'm not even changing out my brush because I'm a low maintenance kind of painter. So now I'm gonna use that gray color to go on top of here. So now those stripes go with gray. You could do this behind your toilet in your bathroom if you wanna have a plaid wall. Oh my gosh, I mean, I'm just thinking that you did a black plaid wall even in your bathroom leading up to Christmas. Before you know it, you got a beautiful wreath on there and you know, gorgeous, right? Absolutely gorgeous. So you can like take this look and you can apply it wherever you wanna apply it. So there you go, and now look at that, right there, all over. Keep that green tape on at this step, so keep the green tape on from your last set of stripes. And now you can actually see, if you were up close, I could actually see the ridges because I've got two layers of paint on one area. I'll show you, let me see, let me peek, let me kind of help you out here. Ooh, do you see that right there? Do you see how it's starting to come together? So we keep this, we keep this down, okay? Definitely wanna keep this down. All right, now we go, we're gonna cover back over the ones that we painted before again, okay? And my calculations are correct. We should be good. So, but I don't get all crazy. I mean, if you really wanted to mark them out, you could, but I'm not bothering to do that because I can see them where the imprint was left. So basically where your stripes were in the beginning, now you finish off with the margin, but you're finishing them off with the other last layer of tape left on. So three layers of tape in total. Now I'm even gonna take that same brush and just dip right back into my black that I started with to create this look. So do you see how, what happens is your colors all work together great because they're all created from the one base color. So you don't have to worry about, are they gonna match? Did I pick the right you know, colors to bring together? And so now what we do is we just paint those lines right there. So you see that three layers of tape, each going in the opposite direction on top of each other, back and forth just like this. All right, you ready? Oh, yeah, baby. All right, so remember, we got our last layer on here. Did you, did you do it right? What do you mean, did I do it right? Do you not have it. faith in me or what? I didn't say that. I Come just on asked now. you did it right. I hope I did it right. It's like a wrapped present. We never know until we take them all off. But yeah, just keep doing your um, back and forth. Yeah, because sometimes you can get confused with your striping and you're like, what? Lucky for you, you have this video to refer back to, right? So that's awesome. So now we take the stripes off that go down. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You guys seeing it come to life? Oh, what color plaid would you do? Would you do a teal river one, mermaid um, tail, red apple, whatever you need. And then these were all your, your sticky down tape. So throw those out, you're good to go. So I like to distress on top of when I paint. So I'm gonna grab a sand block. These are on my website as well. And now, I really like to distress. So now what I'm gonna do is grab my same brush. You guys know I love to do edging and antiquing. So I'm gonna show you what I would do as well if I turn this into a sign. Because I just don't want these um, edges to just feel like kinda just open and like little, not so cozy, you know? Plaid is definitely has a cozy feel to it. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my, uh, in this case, over here I edged in our candy bar brown and I splashed some on the edges of the lettering right. here as well. And now I'm gonna do the round the edges with black on this one because this one's done in a black and gray look. Let's dry that. So you can pull in, by the way, you can pull in. You can start like to pull your brush over the edge of it just to kind of like pull it towards the center and you'll get some of those really cool brush marks. This is really good if you love rustic and you really wanna play it up. I'm gonna go ahead and use Monkey Shine, which is our all natural um, beeswax polish sealer and my brush. 
And now we make it pop. Oh yeah. Can you guys see how nice this is? Can you see how nice this is? So once you put the monkey shine on with the, with the brush, you saw me go in circles. And what that does is it pushes it down into the paint pores. And now I come in with my uh, white buffing cloth. They're on the website as well. And now what I can do is the same sort of uh, motion in circles. And then what it does is it takes off any of that waxiness that might have some dust into it. And uh, I turn my rag over and I will go at it again, okay? And my sides aren't quite dry yet, so I'm not going to... Typically, I would go over the edges as well, but just for this purposes, we don't have to worry about that. And look how nice that came out. So, can't wait to see what colors you guys do. That would be so awesome. Just on scrap wood, you can put it on whatever you want. Woohoo! All right, well, that was fun. Well, that was fun. It was fun to watch back with you guys. I hope it has inspired you to just pick up a brush and experiment. I mean, what's the worst that could happen? You paint over it again and you try again. See you guys again tomorrow. Bye.